daddy always told me Hold your head up high It's just one moment In all of time If you can't see it Just close your eyes And believe it It's all inside so keep on, keeping on till the walls come down Reaching higher till your feet don't touch the ground Hear the power of grace flowing out your mouth Let me hear you If you need freedom God, I know when it's live stream, we just want to stand up and worship him and praise him. So let's do it together this morning. Father, we give you every bit of praise, glory, and honor. Truly, my God, it's all about you today. We are so grateful to you, Lord, for allowing us to come into the house of God. Oh, Father, you said in your word the importance of us assembling together. And today, Lord, even as your children have come, I pray a very, very special blessing upon them. Oh, my God, their needs vary one from the other. And I pray today, Lord, that you will suit their hearts a special blessing. Whatever their need is this morning, oh, my God, you will meet their need. Be it financial, be it marital, be it, Lord, looking for a job, be it uplifting their spiritual need. I pray, my God, that you will bless them. Father, we want to say together as a band of believers, we love you so much. Oh, my God, we honor you. Oh, my Father, you've been so true to your word that you will be with us even until the end. My Father, I pray this morning for all those that are sick. I pray for all those that are standing proxy here, for family members that are sick. Oh, my God, let's pray that you will touch them. So many in our church have been to hospital, have had major surgery, but we thank you, my God, that you've seen them through. Oh, my Father, if anyone is unwell in our presence, I pray, Lord, that you will touch them this morning. And, oh, my God, I thank you that you protected us from this virus. I pray, Lord, that you will protect us and that we in turn, Lord, will, Lord, uh, do what we are asked to do. Father, continue to have your hand of protection. Uh, I'm here to welcome you into the house of God. And I know I, every one of you are smiling be, uh, underneath those masks. So God bless you for that. I know you are excited. Just uh, one or two house rules, please. I don't... Always a hallelujah.
Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Let's sing a little louder. Oh, let's sing a little louder. of God this morning. Hallelujah. How many of you know that chorus? How many of you have been blessed by that chorus during our lockdown and online services? We're going to sing of the goodness of God this morning. With our heads bowed, let's worship Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay in my head Oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God So, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In the darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God 
Hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah to you, O oh God Almighty. All my days you have been faithful, O oh God. You've seen us through difficult times. You've seen us through hard times. In response, we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise and honor you and worship you as our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. You may be seated, church. I greet you in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's so wonderful to see so many of you present in the house of God this morning. We have some that uh, decided not to come in and we understand that. We also have one or two announcements to make and I won't be long. Um, Ravi and his family, Ravi Gopal and his family have relocated to Cape Town due to, due to uh, yeah, job circumstances. So they are not here. Sumeshin has relocated also. And it left our sound desk almost with nobody. But the Lord has been so faithful in that we've got a full team right now. And God has blessed us and given us a full team at the back. And I want you to just put your hands together to appreciate them. Thank you to all of you. And uh, God bless you. Um, during this time, we've had 28 COVID infections in our church. And so you might be wondering why we were closed for such a long time and some of the other churches were open before us. It was due to the number of infections that we had and also we thank the Lord. The week that we closed, we had seven infections in our church in that particular week. And we could have been a super spreader event had we come to church the following week. So all glory, praise and honor be to Jesus for his protection over us. We've also lost four of our members during this time. And uh, very sad to announce the passing of Barbara Rupnarayan. And uh, that was a very, very tragic uh, death. She's been in this church for well over 30 years and uh, passed on. And then we had Molly who passed on. Then Anne, many of you would know Anne and Savvy from many years ago that served in this church faithfully. And Anne passed on. And then we had Solly Jr. who also passed on. And so it's been a difficult time. But we thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace over us. We also have some happy, and also Loshni's aunt, that's Loshni next to Andrew there. Her aunt also passed away. And 
our sympathies to you and the family. Just know that we love you. And it's just unfortunate that COVID has kept us all apart. And uh, it's been a tough, difficult time. And our prayers are with you and the family. Please pass that on to your family, Lord's name. And then also Althea. Remember, Althea passed away prior to COVID. And we haven't had a memorial service for her as yet. So for all these members that our of our church that have passed on, we will be having a memorial service in order to honor them, where we will have our speeches and so on. But for now, for your protection and my protection, we are going to hold on. Okay? Of these, uh, as I said, 28 um, infections, we had 24 recoveries. So that's some good news, and we thank God for that. Then we'd also like to extend our congratulations to Andrew and Loshni on the marriage of their beautiful daughter, Nicole and David. She is a qualified doctor, medical doctor, and please pass our good wishes to Nicole. And uh, we're still praying that they will come back to this church. And uh, she's such a wonderful worshiper, and God bless you, Andrew and Nicole, and uh, Losh and Joshua, and uh, we thank God for you all. And then we also like to congratulate Janelle Governor, that's Devon's daughter, who was married in this time, and we wish them well also. We're going to partake of the communion table, and I'd like us to please stand while the worship team sings the goodness of God. Just the chorus, and then when you, we're partaking of the communion, if you can sing the whole song again.
of this time I'm sure we've witnessed some terrible scenes at funerals and uh, we've seen people weeping I mean it was a very tragic time Pastor Mervyn Richard was my cousin also passed on He's 10 years younger than I am and he's preached in this church for quite a number of times so it was very very painful however there was one scene that I will never forget from a funeral this was of a 17 year old girl and her father who was very young was lying in a casket dead from COVID. And I watched this child live stream of course and she sang this song and I just could not understand how she could sing this song in the depths of her pain. She was just banging on her stomach, touching her stomach and saying, all my life you've been faithful God and her father's lying dead in a casket in front of her it touched me so much to know that that child even in her pain could understand the goodness of God and I want you to, even if I don't preach this morning we're here to worship God together I want you to stand up and I want you to sing the song God has seen you through this COVID-19 virus thus far God has provided you with food 
God has provided you with shelter. Our brother Roy is sitting at the back there. And I can tell you that he's been through some difficult times. His wife had to go through major surgery. It was touch and go and touch and go. We had also uh, another Tara going through a difficult operation. God has seen them both through. There's so many people that I could mention that have been through so much. You and I need to thank God for His faithfulness. All our lives you've been faithful, oh God. You've provided a meal for us. When jobs were scarce, when factories closed down, when there was major lockdowns all over, you and I can look up and say, all my life you've been faithful. May I tell you, every time I hear the song, or every time I sing it, I struggle, because I cannot hold back the tears. <laughs> because God's faithful. He's so faithful. Won't you just sing it for me?
All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am faithful Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God We're going to sing the chorus without any instruments. I just want to hear your voices. I want to hear the congregation. I want you to think about every plate of food that God gave to you. I want you to think about the transport. Look, there's businessmen here that have been closed for 18 months, and yet they've been faithful to God in their tithes, in their giving. They've seen that this time through. We're going to commit them all to God in prayer and just give glory to God. All my life Come and sing it, church. All my life you have been so, so good. Sing it, church. Every breath that I am faithful, I will sing of the goodness of God. One more time. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able I'm gonna sing of the goodness Hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All glory be to God. You may take your seats. Thank you for that wonderful rendition of that song and God's faithfulness. You know, um, there was this pastor and he had such a problem with his gums and uh, it's really hurting. So he, first week he preached for 10 minutes. Couldn't really go further than that. By the next week, he got his false teeth or dentures, and he preached for 20 minutes. And then the next week, he preached for one hour, 25 minutes. And the congregation, one of them came and said to him, but pastor, the first week you preached for 10 minutes, second week for 25 minutes, now one hour, 25 minutes. What happened? He says, the first week, my gums were hurting. The second week, my dentures were hurting. The third week, I made a mistake and I took my wife's dentures and I can't stop speaking. I'm going home to this wife. You know, it's such a joy to be together. I'll be honest with you, I just want to worship God with you today. I just want to give Him praise and glory and honor because there's such a beautiful presence of God in this place. And I know that many of times we talk about we being the church, but for a few moments I want to tell you that we are really not the church, but the church is the church, that's you and I. And I want to show you through scripture that there's always a blessing in corporate worship. And that's why Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And when we are in corporate worship, and when we come together like this, may I tell you that the enemy can never defeat the church of God. Hallelujah. We are going to stand up. We are going to move forward. And we are marching to Zion. And nothing and nobody is going to stop this move because it is a mighty move of God. Hallelujah. I personally think that the enemy tried to destroy the church through COVID-19. But I want to tell you, the church is going to rise up 
stronger than ever before. The church is going to be ready for the final move of God. The church is in a place and a time where there's going to be an explosion of Joel chapter 2, where the Bible says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. There's a wonderful story in 1904 of a lady called Florence Evans. Now, this was in a city in Wales, and she was a little girl of about 17 to 19. There's not much historical record. However, this little girl was in this chapel in Wales, and it was a beautiful seafaring nation with open seas and really beautiful, overlooking the ocean with all their ships and whatever. But there was this minister, Joseph Jenkins, who went down on his knees and he cried out to God that there had to be something different. And I know that you want something different. I want something different. After this lockdown, I began to appreciate every moment that we have together in church. And it's not going to be the same anymore. It's going to be more of you, Jesus. More of your spirit. More of tongue speaking. More of your glory. More of your presence. We need the presence of God like never, ever, ever, ever before. And I tell you what, it's going to be such a mighty downpour of the spirit. You and I are not going to contain it. This pastor cried out to God. Week after week, he would cry out. And Florence came into church week after week. And one day, this pastor was preaching. And he said, when you meet Jesus, something different must happen in your life. And this child was sitting there and she says, I've met Jesus, but nothing's happened in my life. And so she was convicted that day. She went to the pastor's house, Joseph Jenkins. She didn't want to go in. She began to march up and down in front of his house for over half an hour. She couldn't go in. And finally she goes in and she says to him, Pastor, I need to tell you something. I need to ask you something. She sits again for minutes on end and she says nothing. Because she can't get it out. And finally she says, I want to know Jesus more. And he leads her to Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She goes back to church. And then the pastor asks, what does Jesus mean to you? There were over 60 to 70 young people at that gathering. And everyone started to give answers. And the Holy Spirit prompted her. She stood up. And she says, I love Jesus more than anything else I've ever known before. And that one statement in the presence of others in a church gathering started the greatest revival in the Western Hemisphere, the great Welsh revival through Robert Evans. What am I saying to you? That when you are in church, when you are in the presence of God, God moves in a way that he will not move in your home. He will not move in any other way. But when you are in the presence of God, when did the Holy Spirit come upon her? Came upon her in church and she stood up and she said, I love Jesus. When you look at the Zusa Street Revival, where did it start? Not in a home. It started in the church gathering. And I want to tell you, the greatest move of the 21st century is not going to start in your home. And I thank God for you. I thank God that you are here this morning because God's going to start a revival in the final day church. And you and I are going to be part of that revival. Hallelujah. During this time of COVID, it's been found statistically that only one third of people are either listening to a live stream message or going to church. In other words, we've lost 66 and two thirds of the church congregation. And of those people that are watching, not everybody watches their own church or their own pastor. They skip, they do digital shopping and they switch from channel to channel to channel to see which is the most appealing service. I would to God that you be loyal to this church. You watch the live streaming of this church. We are a family. We need to know the heartbeat of what is going on in this house. You agree with me? I told you a joke to make you feel nice, but now you're not agreeing with me. The Bible says in Psalm 84, 
How lovely is your dwelling place. O Lord of hosts, my soul long, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house ever singing your praise. And I want to just read the other part of it here from the Word of God. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. Now this is in reference to the dwelling place which is the church. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thy anointed. This is the verse. For a day in, the, in thy courts is better than a thousand. A day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Hallelujah. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Hebrews 15, 5 says, 5, 13 rather, anyone who has to drink milk is still a baby. Without experience in applying the word about righteousness, but solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties have been trained by continuous exercise to distinguish good from evil. You and I must now seek strong meat, not drink milk. When the pastor says something or the church does something to you, don't get upset and run away from that church. Be strong, drink properly, eat properly rather, and stop drinking milk. Every church has its problems. Every pastor is not perfect. But you know what? There's one person that is perfect and his name is Jesus Christ. And if God has sent you to this church, then your presence should be at this church. Get involved. Start to work. There's many people that might have had a negative experience in the church. But that's fine. You go on and you're committed to God. The church provides power against the enemy. The church, the corporate church. You and I will be able to fight the enemy together. May I tell you that, you know, Tara is here, and I'm so glad to see her here. When she was going through difficult times, being ill, family was in tears, we could stand together as a church. We could pray together. There's so many of you that received flowers from this church. Am I right or wrong? God blessed you. Am I right? Because we care about you. We love you. We sent you flowers to say, look here, we're thinking about you. Because we are a family. We're a church. You're not going to get that if you stay away from being in a corporate fellowship. So the church has power. The church provides the power against the enemy because Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The church provides the same level of spiritual power and authority to all of us as Christians. The church provides spiritual purpose. So we, though many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. That's the Bible that's saying that you and I are joined together. I don't know about you. You know, when my alarm goes, I jump out of bed, and then you go to the bathroom or a cup of coffee or whatever you may do when your alarm goes. But I'm sure that none of you look and check whether your arms have accompanied you, whether your leg has come to, or whether your head is with you or not, or it's still lying in bed. The entire body wakes up together, am I right? And you don't think about your limbs, whether they're with you. It's the same with the church. The church must be together. We must stand together. There's power in corporate worship. There's power when the church can move on. And we can say as a church together, nothing will destroy the church of God. Hallelujah. Now, I know that during COVID, we had some very clever people kept saying, we are the church. We don't need the building. Now, I don't want to argue all those technicalities, but the Bible says, in him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God 
by the Spirit, God's presence lives in the temple. Now, I'm not talking about this. Don't go and argue with me theologically. In the tabernacle of Moses, the presence of God was there. In the temple of Solomon, the presence of God was there. The priest could only go once a year into the Holy of Holies and experience the presence of God. You and I can experience the presence of God every time we come into the house of God. But, but, are you seeking after the presence of God? Or it is, is it your presence in church that's important? I would to God that we would seek more after the presence of God. I wish to God that we, like Florrie Evans, could stand up and say, I love Jesus. Look, the Welsh revival started with one statement only. Not a big, long sermon. It started with one statement. I love Jesus more than anything else. And that's what must really control our lives, our existence. I love Jesus more than anything anything else. If you can say, I love Jesus more than anything else, that's all you ever need. That's all you and I ever need. We need to come together and give God the glory. The Bible says in Psalm 100 verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, and be thankful unto him and bless his name. Where's the gates? The gates of the church, the gates of the temple, the courts of the temple of Moses, the courts of the church. Bless his name and give thanks to him. The temple of Solomon was a wonderful place. And as I said, I'm not going to be too long, even though I'm not wearing the right dentures this morning. I want to end with this, and uh, I want the worship team to come up. I said half past nine. I promised you that, so my sermon is 15 minutes. Because I just believe we need to come together to worship God. And give him glory and praise. I don't know if you know the song. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. Singing, I love you, Lord. How many of you know that chorus? In moments like these. I sing out a song, I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I will lift up my hands, lift up my hands to the Lord. Shall we stand singing, I love you, Lord. Come, worship team. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, I love you. One more thing I'd like you to do before you go. Say his name. Besides saying that I love you, Jesus, say his name. When you say the name of Jesus loudly, it does something for you. Call out the name of Jesus and say, Jesus! And see if it doesn't touch your spirit. You know what you think is good? But what you speak is far more important than what you think. And when you speak out the name of Jesus, I tell you what, something's going to change. I want you to tell him that you love him. And I want you to say his name. Sing for me. The worship team has not been in rehearsals for many months now. And therefore, I'm not putting them under pressure to sing songs that they're not familiar with. We're going to end with goodness of God, okay? We're going to sing this song and then I'll pronounce a benediction. Sorry, before you... A start, please, our baskets are at the end, uh, exits now. Please put in your tithes and put in your offerings. I want to say thank you to you that we were able to sustain our church during this time. You've been giving whatever you could and we appreciate every single cent. May I tell you that this church, when we started at this church five years ago, we carried a bond of 1.2 million rand. was not our spending. 
it was what came to us 1.2 million can i tell you in august this year the bond will be fully paid and this church is completely free so i want to thank you it's only because of your giving and your faithfulness that we can now say that this church is going to be bond free so god bless you as you leave give us your biggest tithe and your biggest offering to offset all that we've been through and god bless you bless thee and keep thee the lord make shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace shalom and god bless you sing for me all my life you have been Daddy always saw me hold your head up high It's just one moment in all of time If you can't see it just close your eyes and believe it It's all the same So keep on keeping on till the walls come down reaching higher till your feet don't touch the ground feel the power of praise flowing out your mouth let me hear you if you need